Hello, I'm Mary V. Today, let's talk about finding your technique. So, sometimes I worry about making YouTube videos about violin technique. Because in real life, you meet a person and you can see their physicality and their musicality and you can make adjustments on the spot you can touch the person and move their elbow and ask them questions and make all these adjustments and with your knowledge you can help the person to unlock their physicality and help them with their musicality and inspire them and show them lots of things um, and it's all in person and of course the difference on YouTube is that um, although the techniques are uh, specific, they have to be generalised. And this is where you come in. Because um, in real life, uh, when the pupil and the teacher work together, um, much faster progress is made. And what I mean is that if the pupil is... Um, passive and just do, only doing what the teacher asks them to do every week, do these scales, do these studies, etc. Um, really, the, the pupil doesn't play any part in understanding uh, the teacher. They're not in the enterprise together. And that passivity can make progress very slow. And although on YouTube there's plenty of um, there's plenty of tutorials on everything from vibrato to spiccato. Um, the difficult thing for you is to choose what's right for you because all violin technique has to be adjusted for your particular physique. For example, I'm five foot one and uh, short arms, I have small hand, very short pinky. Um, your physique may be very, very different from mine. You have to adjust it. You have to understand the principles of what I'm trying to tell you. But you have to adjust it for yourself. But having said that, there are some very general um, and common things that people have problems with. For example, tightness and squeezing in their left hand, um, soreness and pain in their shoulders and stiff bow arm and not uh, an inability to be able to um, move the fingers, etc, etc. I mean, these are all very common. So if you find yourself with a problem like that, uh, you can probably look at tutorials about relaxing and um, how to do things. And if you're able to examine your own playing, um, then you can benefit a lot from these tutorials. But the other thing is that if you have expectations that watching a, a YouTube video um, is going to sort out your technique because you've seen how it's done, um, that isn't actually the way it works because um, the old way we're doing things that we want to change involves muscle memory and that takes a little bit to actually undo. And um, you can keep on uh, knowing the thing that you want to change, but being unable to change it because the muscle memory is more or less set. Um, so how to cope with that, if it's say in the left hand, is if your thumb keeps squeezing, um, you need to isolate it, the problem, and don't work on everything during your practice, but just think about and being able to start examining um, your thumb and just notice when it is squeezing. Um, there may be times, uh, every time you do a fourth finger, that it's squeezing. Where you could, it's great to start noticing these things and put, um, put the jigsaw together. So there should be, and violinists do develop a habit of constantly examining their playing without judgment, without saying, oh, I'm so terrible. Um, but just examining it so that these things that crop up uh, can be changed. So the first thing is to uh, identify it yourself and not wait for a teacher 
to um, tell you, try to be curious and um, look at your own play and say, I wonder why this is happening, I wonder why that is happening. But the little difficulty is that on YouTube there's so much advice going on. But one rule of thumb might be to find the thing that's right for you. Um, is that if anything you're doing and anything that you see on YouTube um, for you to try causes you any pain, then don't do it. So that's a good rule of thumb. On the other hand, changing your technique can feel extremely awkward. <laughs> So you've got to be prepared to feel awkward and um, uncomfortable, right? Because the muscle memory is created by uh, understanding a concept with the mind and then applying it in a very slow individual way, in isolated way, to the actual target of the uh, technique. So that the body very slowly, or depending on how well you do it, can actually embrace the idea and play in an uncomfortable way, a different way, until um, it slowly starts to take over uh, the old thing that you're doing and it replaces the muscle memory. Muscle memory is a fantastic thing. It helps you memorise pieces and it helps you not have to think consciously about every single little thing you're doing because when you play the violin, there is so much going on. The bow, the left hand, tuning, um, playing off the string, you know, the whole thing. Uh, staying relaxed, there's an audience in front of me, or, you know. Th there is so much going on that we, it's like driving a car. You wouldn't expect to um, start from scratch every time. There's got to be some memory and muscle memory involved in the process, although, <laughs> At the same time, you can't be unconscious and go to sleep. You've got to try to, at the same time, have greater awareness um, of the individual thing. That's where practice comes in, and that's where practicing very slowly that gives your mind and body time to adjust, isolate the actual problem, practice it over and over again. And then when you start to speed up a little bit or try to incorporate it into something you're doing, um, take plenty of breaks and rests and um, the best and fastest way to um, have success if you're trying to change something is to stay very fresh. Now that means don't practice for two hours at a time, sweating away, slogging away, never stopping. Um, it's unlikely that your ears, your body and your mind would still be fresh. So freshness is something that um, produces tremendous progress pretty fast. So there are the things I just wanted to tell you about um, YouTube videos for violin. It's, it's like we're in this together. I can give you some knowledge and you can um, explore your own playing and the success of how you apply things is up to you um, by getting into the habit of exploring, examining uh, your playing and slowing it down when you really want to change something. And don't wait until you're in terrible pain to do it. Uh, squeezing and, and uh, sort of sore aches and everything are a sign that you do need to do something. So take your time, be gentle with yourself and give your mind, your body uh, and your fingers um, time to make these adjustments because it's absolutely amazing how often we just go back to what we're used to doing. Even if we know we want to change it, we can't help somehow uh, just going back to the old thing, especially if we're playing in front of people, we do tend to sort of take refuge in safety. So everyone's like this. Um, everyone can make progress if they take charge of it themselves. Even if you have a teacher, ask questions. Um, ask them about um, pain or squeezing or whatever. And don't stop until you get the answer. Uh, by the way, I had a comment on my... Uh, YouTube videos of someone who had um, has a teacher, is an adult beginner, 
and had looked at over 50 vibrato videos. Now that kind of enthusiasm and inquiry and never stopping is absolutely fantastic. So that's my message for today. Uh, we're in this together <laughs> and I'll try to keep on making um, videos that I hope will be helpful to you on your violin journey. So I'll say bye-bye for now. Bye.